Hello, dear friends. We are sincerely happy to welcome you again. Today we will have a conversation with the esteemed Igor Mihalovich Danilov. Greetings. Igor Mihalovich, in our videos you often emphasize the point that we shouldn't be disappointed in people because God is not disappointed in us in people yet. So we shouldn't be disappointed in ourselves and should never give up. You know, these words of yours are always a great support for our viewers and especially for those people who stumbled somewhere on the spiritual path, fell into a trap of consciousness and are in a state of sort of despair or despondency. Unfortunately, from time to time people get into such stories and such situations, so they write to us, tell their stories and ask for advice. Here's one of such stories. What to do if I have stumbled and already given a lot of effort and attention to solving material issues? Quite an unpleasant state arises, even for consciousness, although it was consciousness itself that suggested paying attention to external matters. Thus, I'm like in a jelly, blind, deaf and very heavy. And there is a question in my mind. How to get out of the swamp of consciousness? As a matter of fact, it's very simple, my friend. I understand that many people, especially if they have come into contact with God's love at least a little bit, when they later fall under the power of consciousness again, they really want to bring this state back. Those who haven't experienced God's love, true freedom, true inner joy, this very overfilling, well, they do not understand this, and they do not understand and cannot realize this jelly-like viscosity of consciousness into which they have fallen and cannot get out. Why? Because, unfortunately, the majority of people, not even the majority, but almost everyone in this world lives in this jelly of consciousness. I would even compare it to a swamp, where everything rots and is ground. So even if a person sticks his nose out at least a little bit and takes a breath of clean air, this is already a great joy for him. Whereas if a person has been in heaven at least for a moment, if he has experienced God's true love when his entire essence has manifested, then, of course, when he gets into this swamp and gets bogged down in it, he strives to return to this state of true life, because everything that surrounds us turns out to be a mere illusion Yes, it is real, it exists, and our problems exist, as well as our bodies along with us here. But in order to understand to what extent all of this is a swamp, it is necessary to fly above it at least a little bit. Then you understand what life is and what freedom is. But when a person gets into this swamp, he gets bogged down there and trying to get out, He actually stirs up this quagmire, so it sucks him in even more. It's like a boggy swamp. And indeed, it is hard for people. They do try to break free. But again, what do they strive for? A simple question. Do they strive for that bliss? In its entirety. Certainly. Which they have experienced. But they do not strive for life and do not strive for God. And they give their entire attention and power precisely to fighting this very swamp, this mud. As a result, a person whips it around him, trying to jump up and get out, and plunges there even deeper. Because, my friends, it's impossible to fight the devil. You can keep him out. You can refuse what he whispers to you. But as for defeating him, In what kind of fight? After all, the devil is a non-material structure. We materialize everything he dictates to us. And there has to be a simple understanding. Why do we find ourselves in such a quagmire of our life? And why does it happen that even after experiencing a flight, we, pardon me, like a plucked bird, just fall into this puddle of mud, and cannot fly up anymore. In order to sort this out, I believe we should look carefully at ourselves, at how we live and what values we have. After all, we all want 
what shaitan whispers to us. This is really so. Knowing and understanding the truth, knowing, feeling it already, and realizing how we should live, we still proceed from the point that this is how our parents lived, this is how all our friends lived and keep living, and in general, everyone in the world lives like that. When, excuse me, what is banal and inevitably dead is much more valuable than that which is eternal, bright, and gives true life. And that's the point, that we do not understand what life is. Even if a person experienced God's love and fell, he at least has an understanding. Yes, he loses peace. It is clear that he gets involved in fighting those thoughts, those confrontations and re-evaluations. But this struggle is nothing but feeding of Satan. In other words, we want to solve issues in this world, and afterwards, already when we solve these issues, we will engage in our spiritual development. Or on the contrary, we go in search of the spiritual again in order to get something here, body health, some kind of popularity or fame. In fact, people spend so much time attending various retreats, various ashrams and holy places in search of some power, some kind of mystery, in order to teach other people afterwards. Meaning, not to gain life in oneself, not to help people gain this life, but purely to search for some kind of popularity or something else. This is really so. People forget that even after a slight rise about the others and getting at least a little bit of fame, in return you will get buckets of filth and mud, and you'll be hated by all and sundry. Why? Because this hatred and this bucket full of filth against you is a tax on popularity. And everyone experiences that, except those who serve Satan truly at their core. He protects those ones. In fact, there are very few of them in the world, but as for everyone else, even those who are under Satan's power, again, what does it mean to be under Satan's power? Any person who gets power or popularity here is again faced with what we call the devil or Satan. After all, in any position a person receives a lot of temptations. This is really so. And even if he has gained experience, he knows what life is, he knows what flying is, he truly knows what bliss is, this very God's love. But once he plunges back into the swamp, failing to hold on to that height, a person is confronted with daily life, At this point, he becomes so immersed in this hustle and bustle that no matter how much he seeks to break free, his wings are clipped. There are good examples, let's say, even in religions. If we take Siluan the Athanite, he is a very popular and famous man who has lived a difficult life. One time, upon receiving bliss and losing it, he then struggled for 14 years to regain it. He tells an interesting story, but he doesn't tell the truth. Why did he have to struggle for so long to take a full breath later on? Everything is actually simple. He was surrounded by people, and he had to deal with finances and many other things. Life spun him around and seduced him. Yet later on he recounted that he had been in serious ascesis. What does it mean? He abided in that ascesis. Yes, he was getting himself ready to renounce everything worldly. But he had it all. And this very inner duality, which was imposed on him by Shaitan, held him like an anchor in this swamp, until he realized the entire simplicity and, in fact, all the elusiveness of this swamp and this world. 
Only then he was able to take a full breath again. Because such is the world we live in, and there are plenty of things we value. Many people would be right to say, but what if you are hungry? Or you are cold, it's freezing outside, do you have to stay naked in the cold? While in order to be clothed and have a roof over your head, you have to earn money, you have to work, right? In order to feed your body and keep it healthy, you need money too. And this is also such a weighty argument from our consciousness. My friends, who told you that you have to be poor, naked, and reside in some cave or somewhere else? It will be even harder for you there. It is almost impossible to achieve flight in this kind of state. Why? Many went into seclusion, but somehow it didn't work out well for them, and they returned. Why? Because people face manifestations of the devil head-on. And the more is given to a person, and the closer he is to God, the harsher the devil rises up against him. And when a person is forced to survive, again, he faces a lot of problems. Even when he goes into such seclusion or something else, an extremely serious resistance of his own consciousness arises there. And the temptation which is hidden in his pridefulness is very strong, because he begins to exalt himself that he is cooler than others, and God is obliged to love him. God doesn't owe anything to anyone. Please, note this, friends. God doesn't owe you anything. And He is not obliged to you in any way. He gave you a chance, a chance to gain life. It's a tremendous gift to you, my friend. And now everything depends on you. Why? Because in His mercy, God has given you the right either to choose life or to attain death, to enter paradise or to go to hell. It is your individual right and no one can take it away. Even God cannot take it away, let alone shaitan. Our personal choice is paramount here. Why? If we became seduced by something and got carried away with material things, forgetting about God, that's the answer. If we do not choose life and do not live, then we inevitably die. We bury ourselves Every moment when we forget about God's love, after all, no one prevents us from doing even very difficult work that requires maximum concentration while remaining in love with God. No one prevents us from building a house and at the same time loving God. No one prevents us from conversing with friends while we are abiding in God's love. Isn't it so? You see how simple everything actually is? What swamp can drag a person down if he abides in God's love? None at all, because there is nothing greater than God's love. And that swamp turns into a transparent and pure water drop which quickly runs out when there is God's love. Everything is simple. And if you were sucked in, my friend, if you got into a situation and you don't know how to get out, think honestly and don't lie to God. That's what is important. Think honestly and evaluate what is more important to you at this moment. Yes, I understand, there are different situations in life. There are also very acute ones. There are even practically unresolvable ones and with a bad outcome. But then you need to hold on to God even more. Whereas if you've already got into a bad situation with your health or business, whatever it may be, such is the world nowadays, it is harsh. These are the end times, friends. They are supposed to be like that. But even in this situation that is imposed by the present day, when you find yourself in the darkest corner, remember one thing, you have a way out. And that way out is God's love. And no one can take it away from you unless you yourself turn away from God. God never turns away from a human. He always extends His hand to you. The only question is, will you take it? 
Will you extend your own hand or not? Or will you continue to drown in this quagmire, justifying your position by saying that you have a lot of problems, that it is hopeless? How can you love God at a time when you have a lot of problems, whether these are problems with your health, or financial problems with your business, or in your relationships with other people? My friend, just sit down, calm down, and look honestly at how much time you spend on pleasing shaitan. Because with your anxieties, with your worries about the material world, and yourself personally in this material world, with all these emotions you actually feed Satan. You give him what God gave you to gain life, while you give it to shaitan, so that he becomes more powerful, so that he rules over you, creates more and more problems for you, and distracts you from God's love. And instead of God's love, he gives you pain and suffering. Is that really fair? Do you deserve that? If you choose filth, scum, an inevitable death, that's your choice. And even God will not be able to help you, because that is your choice. But if you choose God's love, then you know, my friend, wherever you are, even in the most difficult situation, if you have one instant to just look at this world, just one instant of your life, the last one, dedicated to God's love, it is worth it, because you won't lose anything but you can gain a lot. That's the point. You should not be sad about anything in this world, about anything material, no matter what you've lost. Even our health, yes, it has to be protected. It is our means of communication and living in this world. It is our body, but it is not us. And that is important. If you don't understand that, you will remain in slavery to your own body. Your fingernail will be much more important to you than the absence of God's love inside you. If God forbid you hurt it and so forth, it's your nail after all. And if God forbid something starts aching in the body, it is so sad, so problematic. As for the fact that shaitan is manipulating you at that time, you don't care. As long as your body is comfortable and not too many bad thoughts get into your head. Isn't this how we live? It is, friends. But we can change this, literally, in an instant. Many people come up with a question, how to get out of the situation when you've lost this God's love? You've already had it. We talked a lot about how to gain it, and perhaps we will have to talk a lot more about it. But how to bring this state back? People say that you should make a lot of effort. Like that guy from Mount Athos we talked about, who spent 14 years on that. And other people say, even our friends, I've been caught and I cannot get out. I'm so absorbed in this whirlwind of hustle. What can I do? And how long will it take to get out? How long will it take, friends? I will answer you. Only… Two instants. The first one, to realize where you want to go. If you strive for God, if you strive for life, if you strive for joy, if you want to fly instead of rotting in a swamp, then it will take just an instant to make a choice. The second one, well, the second one is to tell the devil to get lost. And that's all. Is that really a lot? Does it take a lot of time for a person to become filled with God's love, to really dissolve in His love and His joy, so that even your body is filled with His love? It is so, in fact. When God's love is overfilling us, we feel it even at the physical level, because at this time the soul sinks, and everything fades. Excuse me, even when you are in a swamp, 
you begin to notice that it is full of life, the life that God gives. Even that devil who starts whispering all sorts of nonsense to you in order to lead you astray, you understand that he exists only because we feed him with God's love, with that power which God gives us to gain life eternal. And you have the right not to give it to him, but to use it for yourself. Having understood this and having become filled with this love, Every human can gain life, because there is God's will for that. Every person has the right to become a human, to become equal among equals and worthy among the worthy. That's the meaning of our existence. There is no other meaning. Tell me, can rotting here in this swamp and feeding Satan with our own lives be the meaning of our lives for any of us. Doesn't that seem funny to you, friends? It's very funny when you look at it from the outside. But when you get into this, my friend, you just don't see it. Therefore, there are merely two instants to look at yourself and to stop feeding Satan and start loving God. But in order to take a full breath of God's love, we should first learn to love each other. Therefore, my friends, if we are not overfilled with God's love, let's start with a small thing, with love for one another. But if we are overfilled with God's love and we feel it, then all the more, let's just love each other. Thank you. Thank you so much, Igor Mikhailovich. Thank you. Peace be with you and God's love.